Now let's take up the discussion of inferential statistics. And what inferential statistics are is it allows you to make inferences. It makes estimations. And so let's first uh, distinguish this from the other kind, which is descriptive statistics. In descriptive statistics, you have a group of people, and you know everything that you need to know about every single one of these people. So let's say we're talking about a variable, and the variable where we're looking at is height. So in this case, we would be able to take every single one of these people, and we'd be able to measure everybody's height. Now this is possible because the size of this group is small enough that we're able to do that. Now let's say we want to make, uh, we want to know the average height of not just a small group of people, but we wanted the height of everybody in the United States. Now this would be fairly difficult to do because there's about 300 million people. So to get everyone's height measured would be cumbersome at the least and impossible most likely because by the time you measured one person's height here, maybe this person died, so now you got to remove them from your sample. It just would not be possible to do. So how can we get the mean height? Well, that's when we use inferential statistics. And what that means is we take a small subgroup of these people, what we call a sample, and we measure the height of these people. And then we could use that information to make our inferences about this group. So let's say we want to know what the average height of everybody in the United States is, but it's impossible to get this information. So what we do instead is we take a sample and we get the average height in the sample. Because getting that value is easier to do. And then we use this uh, estimate to make an inference about what this is. And that's what inferential statistics is in a nutshell. And so now let's talk about how we do that. But first let's talk about some terms. So again, we here have an entire population which generally is going to be so big that we can't really measure any of the things that we want to measure in everybody because there's too many people. But what are some of the, the, uh, uh, the values that can we use to describe a group like this? Well, we looked at two before. There was a measure of central tendency and there was a men measure of dispersion or, or variability. So the measure of central tendency that we'll use is the mean or the average. And the common abbreviation for a population's mean is this little signal here, which is a, a mu. And the other one that we can look at is the measure of variability, and we looked at standard deviation. And we will abbreviate that with a lower place, uh, sig a lower case sigma, sigma. So we use these lowercase Greek letters to represent the values for the population, and these are generally considered the true values that we want to know they're too difficult to know because the population is too big. And these population values are together called parameters. And these parameters are the, the true values, the truth that we want to know, but they're just too hard to calculate. And the way I remember this is that population starts with P and parameter starts with P, so they're both P. And so for population, you have parameters. And, and these are our parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. Now remember, we said earlier that we can't possibly measure all of these people, so we're going to take a sample. And a sample is a subgroup of the entire population. Now the best samples are randomly taken. You, take, you just kind of randomly pick uh, people from here and you, you figure out some way to make that random. Now why that randomness matters is because if you don't pick a random, let's say we're measuring weight and we decide to pick only people from Chicago, and let's say Chicagoans are heavier than New Yorkers, so then we're going to think that the whole population is a lot fatter than they are because we're going with Chicagoans. Let's say we want to measure height, and let's say Californians are taller. I don't know if that's true, but let's just say that. And then if we use the height of Californians to infer the height of the whole population, we would be wrong. But if you randomly picked people, you'd get one Chicagoan, one New Yorker, one person from California, one Texan, then you're going to get a good representative here. And ra picking at random is really the best way. Nothing that we can devise is going to create a better representative sample than just randomly picking. So we want to get a random sample. Now we can calculate some values of central tendency and variability on the sample too. We can also calculate the mean and the standard deviation. 
and those are represented with uh, you know our standard letters so mean is going to be an X but it's actually X bar you can see this line above it X bar represents the mean of the sample and the standard deviation of the sample is an S and so these these values here are called statistics and look my little trick works here too so statistic and sample both start with an S and so that way you can remember that for samples we have statistics for populations we have parameters uh, for mean we have mu for the population for the mean of the sample we represent it by an X bar for standard deviation it's a sigma a lowercase sigma and for standard deviation of a sample it's an S and we said that these are the true values that we wanted to measure, but we couldn't measure, but they're difficult. These, on the other hand, we can measure because we took the sample, and this is a manageable number, and we're able to, to measure that. And now we should ask, there's one more, one, one more parameter and statistic that I left out, and that's the, the number, the, the total number of people here. And so for the population, that's represented by an uppercase N. So the n in this case well we know it here it's 300 million people in the population so n equals 300 million but there may be some sometimes we don't even know this value and uh, we don't know any of our parameters now the the n for the sample is represented by a lowercase n and in this case our sample has seven people in it so n equals seven whereas this big n was 300 million so here we have our sample and it has its statistics, which include the number, the, the total number, the mean, and the standard deviation. We have the similar thing for the parameters of a population. Now, you could take more than one sample. So at random, we take another seven group of people, and we'll call this uh, sample number two. And of course, this sample will have its own mean and its own standard deviation. And so to differentiate this mean, and we put a little sub two here, and for this standard deviation, we put a sub 2 here. And then I went back up here and I put a 1 and a 1. So sample number 1 has its own mean and standard deviation. Sample number 2 has its own mean and standard deviation. And we could do this many, many, many times. And we can do it many times. And, and you can call each one of these uh, a sample. Or sometimes I've heard them called trials. So this is one trial, two trial. And you could do it many, many times. And each one would have its own mean. And each one would have its own standard deviation which is some reflection of the actual true mean and the actual true standard deviation, that is, the parameters. Now, we're going to come back to this in the next video. All right, so in this one, we talked about uh, populations, and we talked about samples, we talked about parameters, and we talked about statistics, and we talked about what inferential statistics does, which means we're going to use a sample to infer something about the population. All right, I'll see you in the next video.